The CCP coronavirus could be a regime ender for the Chinese Communist Party. Find out how economic turmoil might bring down the regime. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. The deadly coronavirus outbreak. I'm calling it the CCP coronavirus, or just CCP virus for short, since the Chinese Communist Party is to blame for letting it spread in the first place. Of course, nowhere has the CCP virus had a more devastating impact than inside China. And the Chinese Communist Party is concerned, not so much about all the people that have died from it, but about the economic downturn it's led to. It could be a fatal blow to their rule. I sat down over Skype, you know, because of the quarantine, with China expert Gordon Chang to discuss what might be next for the Chinese Communist Party. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah, how's, how's uh, life under the coronavirus? I see your hold up at home. We're under mandatory lockdown in New Jersey, mm -hmm. and we're surviving fine. Ah, glad to hear that. Well, so, Gordon, the coronavirus basically shut down the Chinese economy for two months. Uh, what impact do you think that had? I'm sure that the first quarter is going to be negative gross domestic product growth. I I'm mm. sure China is going to report something positive. Um, but nonetheless, when you start to look at the underlying numbers, it shows an economy deep in the red. So, for instance, oil demand was down 20 percent year on year. Um, the Exports for the combined January-February period um, down 17.2 percent. Imports, a, a crucial measure of domestic demand, down 4.0 percent. The purchasing managers' indices for February were historically negative, um, both for manufacturing but especially for services. So, um, you know, March there might be a recovery of some sort, but even so, Chris. You know, you have, for instance, only about an average of maybe 70 percent of the workers back at the job sites. So March probably is negative as well. Um, so the first quarter is, I think, a really big hole for China. Hmm. Well, I know China has a history of lying about its GDP numbers. So these are some of the things we can look at to get a better sense of how the Chinese economy is actually doing. Now, I know China has uh, required people to go back to work. It's trying to get the economy uh, going again. Do you think that will work? Well, I'm sure that they uh, will have some sort of uh, recovery in, in this month, March, um, and we're going to see it continue through April. But we got to remember the issue here is that the virus has not completely subsided in China. Mm -hmm. There are many unreported cases from all that we can tell, which means that as workers get back to the job site, um, there's going to be reinfections. And there's evidence of that in Dongguan, which is the industrial heart of Guangdong province. Um, when workers came back to their factory sites, they were actually infecting each other. So they had to go into quarantine or into hospital, as the case may be. So um, this is going to be a much slower process than Beijing has been trying to show to the rest of the world. You know, Beijing wants to say, oh, you know, China's back. Well, it's sort of back, but uh, it's going to take a long time, Chris. So what will happen if there is a second wave of the coronavirus in China? Well, I think you're going to see something like we um, witnessed in, in uh, January and February. Um, you know, it may not be as bad, um, but we're already starting to see, you know, the wave of reinfections. Beijing's numbers for the last five or six days show um, almost all the cases are, as they say, imported. There's only been one case uh, of uh, local transmission um, in the last week or so, and that uh, case came from somebody who was imported. But that's pretty unlikely because we're getting indications from Wuhan, which is the epicenter, that there are uh, dozens of infections there. And also, even in Beijing, um, there were clusters, um, which I think the government and the party have been trying to hide. So um, this is going to be a really difficult process for China. Um, because they're going to have to deal with two things at the same time. They're going to have to deal with getting people back to work, but they're also going to have to deal with the virus um, spreading fast again. And we know that there's a second wave of infections in Asia. It's Taiwan, it's Hong Kong, it's to a lesser extent Singapore, and we're going to see it in China as well. What impact will this have on the rule of the Chinese Communist Party? I think long term, um, this is maybe a regime ender for the party. Um, mm -hmm. We saw, for instance, in February at the death of one of the Wuhan eight, 
the eight doctors who were whistleblowers. Um, that created a wave of white hot anger across social media platforms. You know, people were demanding fundamental political reform. Since that time, we have seen people in Wuhan go to their balconies and even disrupt a uh, inspection tour by a vice premier. Um, you know, they've been now singing, uh, Do You Hear the People Sing, that politically impactful song from Les Miserables, which, by the way, is what people in Hong Kong adopted as their anthem in protest of China. So it's very clear what's going on. People are talking about, in China, are talking about Chernobyl. Um, so uh, I think this is going to really create a period of friction. And especially after the virus subsides, people are going to engage in recriminations. They're going to start complaining. And remember, this is the revolutionary season in China. It's spring. What impact will this have on the global economy? A lot of Western countries and businesses are still heavily invested in China. Yeah, one of the things that's really bad news for China is that its traditional export markets have been hit heavily. So, for instance, the U.S. Um, you know, large portions of the U.S. are in lockdown. The economy is in standstill in, in many places. The U.S. economy is going to have a horrible first quarter. We're going to be negative. Um, and that's also true, of course, in Europe, um, another big export destination for China, where you have Italy, Spain, um, now France, Germany. These are places that uh, are also coming to a, a halt. So for, it's going to be hard for China to sort of dig itself out with an export-dominated economy. And that means that for China, it's going to be hard. But of course, it means everywhere around the world, with some exceptions, I think are going to show some effect of a downturn. And that means um, we're going to see that global recession that people talk about. And Chris, you know, people in our country are talking about Great Depression, too. Mm. And although I'm, I don't know if that's really going to be the case, nonetheless, more and more people have been talking about that. Well, I know a lot of Americans are invested in China without necessarily even knowing it, like with pension funds. What can Americans do to avoid the China market? Well, there's one American who can do everything. President Trump can use his emergency powers to get, for instance, the federal pension funds to get their money out of China. And he can actually get other institutions out of China as well. And I think we really need to do that because this is just outrageous. You know, number number of these Chinese companies are on the Commerce Department's entity list, which means Americans can't contract with them without getting prior approval from Commerce. Yet. These, we can all invest in these Chinese companies, which have been deemed um, threats to the U.S. national security interests. Th this makes no sense whatsoever. And I think that we are going to have a pulling apart of uh, the U.S. and China in the financial markets, and it won't happen too soon. Well, thanks so much for joining me today, Gordon. Thanks, Chris. And for those of you watching, uh, be sure to check out America Uncovered, where we'll have a follow-up episode with Gordon about South Korea and North Korea's changing relationships. Check it out.